Hi guys, welcome to Investing with JYK and uh, today we will, we will discuss uh, a, specific, um, a specific bond actually. Um, so the bond we'll be discussing is KTP and you'll be like, okay, this thing says Structured Products Corp. What exactly is that? So what it is, is um, JCPenney's bond. Uh, how do you find that out? KTP JC Penny. So um, here we go. It really is ah uh, this one is actually better. Quantum Online is a really good website. Okay, so let's first see what this is. Right, so um, it says. The print, uh, these are certificates, and then uh, what this really is, corporate-backed trust security. So basically what is underneath it is uh, are, are basically bonds. And the bond typically is like $1,000 or whatever, but in this case, they kind of subdivide it up into pieces of 25 each. And um, the debenture itself is here. The underlying security are the 7 and 5 eighth percent I've I don't know why people don't just use 7.625 but whatever uh, debentures due in 2097 issued by JC Penney okay so this is like a hundred years away or 80 whatever uh, it's highly likely that JC Penney will go bankrupt before then but let's continue reading so it pays that interest uh, semi-annually on whatever days and um, yeah, it's redeemable anytime at the underlying issuer's option at 25 uh, plus sum of present value remaining scheduled payments plus accrued. And, okay, so basically they can redeem at 25 plus something. So if it's under 25, you can be sure that whoever uh, issued the uh, bond, which is JCPenney, is going to redeem it. Plus, JCPenney doesn't exactly have the money to redeem anything at the moment. Um, and it says, which appear to make the after redemption of these securities unlikely prior to the maturity date. Yeah, so basically they have to pay all the interests ahead of time, plus um, the uh, the face value. So that's usually not what they will do because it, it brings them no advantage. And this one says it too. It expects to trade flat, which means that current interest will be reflected in trading price or whatever. So that's not very interesting. But um, so we basically know that the uh, um, coupon rate, coupon rate is uh, 25, sorry, 7.625%. And at the face value of 25. So, and then this thing is gonna mature at, um, you know, like long in the future. This is what? The, this year is 18. So, this is what? 80, yeah, exactly. 80 years. 80 years are less. 79 years. So, let's try that out, right? Imagine. Maturity 79 years, face value is 25, coupon is equal to 25 times 7.625%. And let's add them up. Uh, ooh, this is 60. Okay, yeah, we, we need to go to 80 or 79. 79 here. This thing goes down, this thing goes down, and this is gonna, we're gonna add the face value to it. Uh, that's not very useful. Face value is B3. Okay. So what is the current total? So if you expect 10% return, then uh, your 
uh, current value is only $19. So if you expect, say, 8% um, uh, return, the current value is 23, which makes sense because the the rate is 7.625. So basically, if you do this 7.625, I should to go to exact 25, right? Okay, so let's say we expect 10% uh, return, and uh, JCPenney has a very high chance of going bankrupt. Imagine that, right? So let's imagine if JCPenney went bankrupt in 10 years. So in that case, we're going to add up these values, the first 10 years. So, you know, uh, let's put something here. Let's say... Uh, Instead of CC, we're going to do C1, uh, C10, all the way to C19. And you can see the highlighted parts is really here. So if you expect 10% um, return and JCPenney doesn't go, JCPenney continue to pay the, the interest for 10 years, uh, this thing's worth $11.7. Now, in a bankruptcy, the definition of bankruptcy is the owners, uh, essentially the equity holders, will be wiped out. Uh, that they can no longer pay their obligations. Their obligation is debt. This is one of their debts. Um, so typically, debt holders will have to take a haircut. So imagine if we took a haircut of 50%, right? That would mean uh, this thing plus, sorry, that, that would mean the 10th year's uh, payment. Imagine they went bankrupt and then on that year, and then they uh, the, the bondholders take a 50% haircut. Then uh, a haircut just means you get less than what you were promised. You get less than the, the, the principal. Um, so plus 12.25, that's... Uh, sorry, 12.5. That's 50% less than the face value of 25. And that means you will get 16.53% uh, present value. Right? So, um, so if you assume that JCPenney will go bankrupt in five years, then you should you know, put the, and if we keep assuming 50% discount, so plus 12.5, then in this case, you are looking at, uh, instead of, so the fifth year, that'll be C14, so you should only pay $15 for this bond. So that would give you a 10% annualized return, um, if during bankruptcy you recoup 50% of what is owed to you. Obviously, there is a chance that you get less than that. So instead of 50%, say we get only uh, 20%. So then in that case, you just add 5. Then this bond is valued at just... Uh, you should only pay $10.33. Okay, so let's go back to our 50%... Uh, um, assumption. Uh, how do we arrive at assumption? Um, I'm just guessing, and it, it's hard to find historical data on, on corporate bankruptcies, especially because uh, a lot of the money will go to the legal proceedings, so a lot of um, fees are taken away by lawyers and everything. So sometimes even the asset um, would cover, let's say, 98% of the debt, it's it still, you get much less than that. Also, a lot of assets are um, are not easily liquid liquidatable, uh, cannot easily be liquidated because they are inventory for JCPenney, and those are clothing. So a lot of the value of that is based on the fact that they can sell it in the a store format if you were just selling it as you know uh, fabric or something then they were they will be worth a lot less and if you don't have a display shelf space for people to select 
um, that will be worth a lot less. Maybe it's only worth 10% of what uh, is recorded on the balance sheet. And um, we always have to remember uh, assets can, asset, aside from cash, assets can, are, are not reliable, but debts always are. So assets are not reliable, liabilities always are. Um, which is a funny thing to think about. Uh, so, okay, so let's see what they are trading at right now. The price at the moment is 13.43. So, if this is what you expect, you should be buying it if you only expect 10% return. If you expect a, a, a bankruptcy in five years and you can recoup 25% of the bond principle um, and you know the, the there's a way of calculating this you can re uh, uh, calculating what the uh, expected return is um, and you can play with uh, these assumptions uh, I'm gonna I suppose I'll put this thing on a on a Google sheet and so you can you know copy it and then play around uh, and see how valuations change and and how um, uh, how much you should pay for each thing if uh, if your expected return is a certain value. The reason we are not yet into stocks is because that involves a lot more com uh, co uh, projection about the future because stocks will benefit from both the upside and suffer from the downside of a business. For a bond, your upside is fixed. There's a peak. Uh, you will never get paid more than your coupon each year. It's just not going to happen. And then the worst case, if they stop paying your coupon, they're in bankruptcy, basically. And then if they're in bankruptcy, then your downside is typically less than the, the uh, shareholder, because the shareholder in bankruptcy usually receive zero and if shareholder were to receive even one cent so these are the um, the common shareholders the preferred shareholders and even uh, some of the uh, subordinate debt holders if they were to receive anything you as a uh, a normal debenture holder you're not like one of the super senior or asset backed ones so if you will be um, uh, receiving your full value. So you would get your $25 back. Um, so by assuming taking a 50% loss, it, I think it's being fairly conservative, but we'll see. Uh, as, as you know, investing with anything is always risk involved. So yeah. And oh, the other thing you can think about is JCPenney, Sorry, JCPenney's um, current market cap, you know, JCP, is something like a billion dollars or so. Yeah, it's a billion dollars of market cap. They're losing money. So you can also look at that way, right? So are they making money or losing money and all that stuff? So that's even more involved. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's a more involved analysis. So I'm not going to do it uh, this time. But you can look at their uh, net income. So they are losing money every year, basically. Uh, around, uh, well, they were losing less. And in terms of cash flow, you know, just looking normally, their, their free cash flow is about zero. So they're not making or losing much cash. Obviously, that at the expense of not spending much money on the capital expenditure side. Um, but the most important thing is market cap. If the market values the uh, market cap, the, the, the total business, the equity portion of the business to be a billion dollars, then to me, I think it is highly likely this company will survive for five more years. It takes a while for this company to die. And, uh, and we're not... You know, we, we don't benefit from any of the upside. And at the moment, um, the trading price is about half of um, the face value. And then you get the same amount of uh, 
same amount of uh, in interest. So the effective um, yield is the effective interest rate is actually really high. So I think it's something like you know something like that. Uh, whoops. Equals this guy divided by that. So yeah, so you're getting a fourteen percent interest payment every year. Now that doesn't mean this is going to return you fourteen percent um, in the future. You know, over the entirety of the, uh, of the, this whole um, bond. It's a debenture, but it's really just it's the same thing in this case. Um, so don't get fooled by the really high yield, and don't be. I think you also don't want to be too afraid of the chance of bankruptcy because you are in the end a creditor, not a shareholder. If you buy into this, okay. So I hope this is uh, useful and. Um, yeah, it's one of those obscure securities that I like to look in. Uh, I like to look into. And if you haven't subscribed and you like what I do here, um, please uh, subscribe and click like if this has provided you with any value. See you next time.